Hello everyone, welcome back to our channel. I'm Julie, the owner here at Broche Ballet. I am here with you guys today to talk about how to sew your point shoes. So uh, we have some super exciting uh, dancers going up on point for the very first time here in the Broche Ballet online studio. And so we're talking about how to sew your point shoes. Last week, I talked about what to expect in your first point shoe fitting. So if you are going on point for the first time, be sure to watch that video as well as our video on preparing your toenails for your first point fitting so that you can be super ready for that very special and exciting experience. The other thing you need to know when you get your point shoes, um, some places don't offer sewing or if you order your point shoes online or do an online fitting like what the point shop offers, you will probably need to sew your shoes yourself. So today I'm going to sew a new pair of shoes for you so that you can see how I would go about doing it. Um, I'll do all of the setup and show you all of the tips of the different ways to sew the shoes. So um, when we get new point shoes, they arrive in a little bag and they arrive without ribbons or elastics on them. The reason for this is because there's so many ways you can customize your shoes and um, they come basically as a blank slate so you can customize it yourself. So um, there's a couple of ways, there's so many ways, but I'm gonna show you two main ways that you can sew your elastics. Um, there's generally one way to sew your ribbons, so I'm gonna show you two ways to sew your elastics. The first way is one single loop. So here's an old pair of point shoes of mine, and it has one single loop around the ankle. So this goes just up around your ankle bone, and then the ribbons crisscross over the ankle. The other way is to have crisscross elastics, which is more like what you might see on your soft shoes or your slippers. So we have a crisscross elastic um, that will crisscross over the front of the ankle. This is how I almost always sew my shoes. That is because my feet have a very high instep and arch and tend to push a little too far over my shoes naturally. So I like to use my crisscross elastics to help keep me stable in my shoes. When, um, if you have shoes, uh, feet that don't go as far over the box or have that issue, um, you'll do a single strap elastic. This helps keep the heel on, um, keeps the heel from slipping off, um, but is not, uh, does not provide as much pulling back on the shoe as the crisscross does. Generally, when you get fitted, your fitter is gonna tell you what they recommend as far as like what, which style they think is gonna work best for your feet. If they don't tell you, be sure to ask them what they think about your feet and what they recommend for your ribbons and elastics. So generally, you don't have to make that choice yourself in the beginning, um, but you can talk with your fitter about what would work best for you. The other thing is that there's two types of ribbons. So as I mentioned, there's really one way to sew your ribbons, um, which is to, to sew them by the arch and then they come up and crisscross. But there's two types of ribbons. This kind of ribbon I also use regularly. It, it's very stiff. If I pull it, it doesn't stretch. It has no give to it. Um, but then there is stretchy ribbon, um, like on this first pair of shoes that I showed you with the single loop. And this ribbon does stretch. Can you see that when I pull it, it stretches a little bit. It has some give to it. Now again, this setup for this shoe with the stretchy ribbon and the single elastic is gonna be a gun for that foot that doesn't really have the issue of going too far over the shoe. It's gonna give you the support without the pulling back effect. Um, not everyone likes stretchy ribbons. Personally, I don't like them. Um, I think that they feel a little crazy on my feet, but a lot of people swear by them and love them, so it's really up to you. Um, this elastic that I use is um, very thick. Um, I, again, I like the support of a thick elastic. They also do make like a, almost like a clear elastic um, that's very loosely woven. Again, that's another option for you if you want the support of keeping the heel on, but you don't need to be pulled back off your box like I do. So I use really thick ribbon, really thick elastic, and a crisscross, but there is a whole range of ribbon and elastic combinations to help you with what your specific needs are with your shoes. So let's get to the sewing. So here's my process. I'm gonna tip you guys up a little bit so you can see my feet. So what I start with, I start with putting my pads on um, just under my tights so that I can just easily try my shoe on and off. This process involves putting your shoes on many, many times. So I like to just make it nice and easy. I use a toe spacer between my big toe and my second toe because um, I do have a little bit of a gap there between my toes. And I use a um, really uh, long pad that goes all the way up the sides of my feet. Again, your fitter is definitely gonna recommend padding for you. Um, there is so many padding, there's so many padding options out there. So if you're feeling pain in your shoes, just talk to your fitter about it and they'll be able to help you sort it out because there's really no need to be in pain or be getting blisters or anything like that these days. There's so much padding and technology um, that we have to work with. 
Okay, so supplies. I have a box of safety pins. Um, I usually use about six to eight safety pins. Um, I have my elastics here that I um, have, and then I have a, uh, my ribbons. So uh, personally, I just cut old ribbons off my point shoes, but if you're buying your ribbons, they'll come in like a little um, spool or a little, a little pack and you can cut them in fourths. Okay, so let's start with the elastics. That's always the best place to start. So I open up my elastics. Um, the elastics come with two pieces or one piece that you can cut in half. Since I crisscross, that means I need one pack per foot. If you're doing the single loop, you only need one pack and that'll get both of your feet because each foot only needs one piece of elastic. So I'm gonna show you both ways. I'm gonna start with the single loop first and then I'll show you the crisscross. So I actually have another elastic here for the single loop. So I'm gonna open that one up to show you the single loop option. So, I have, this is how they come. This is a brand new pack. This is how they come. And it's, uh, it's gonna be a little long, so I'm gonna just cut it in half. So I fold it in half, and then I'm gonna just snip it. So when I do my single loop, what I'm looking for is um, I want to, I like to line up the elastics parallel with this seam in the back. I like to have them pretty close and just right here. So what that means is I'm gonna take one side of the elastic, I'll put it right on the inside of that shoe, upright on that seam. And then the other part of it is gonna come up and around and be on that seam as well. Now it might take you a couple tries to get it twisted and all of that correctly, but we are gonna try it on our foot before we sew anything. So you have time, you have some time um, before it needs to be perfect. Again, we I always like to pin it and try the whole thing on before I sew anything. Measure twice, cut once, right? Always a rule when it comes to <laughs> grafting and building anything. So I'm gonna just pin in, in my shoe. I'm gonna just use one of my safety pins. I'll scoot up so you can watch a little bit. So I'm gonna pin my shoe my my elastic right there i'm gonna pin it on the back side and try your best not to stab your fingers you get a little dab of blood on your shoe it's all part of the process though and then i'm gonna loop it around and so this hi danielle great to see you welcome i'm just showing you guys how i sew my point shoes today And then I'm gonna do the other side. So you see they're actually pretty close together. And there's so much of this as preference. Like don't take any of this as like uh, hard, set, and fast. If it's not working for your ankles and your feet, then you can change it. This is all um, just a template or a blueprint for you to use. So let's do this. Okay, so now I'm gonna put it on and see how it looks on my foot. I'm gonna put it on and see how it feels. Now be super gentle while you put it on because obviously it's just pinned on, it's not sewn on. So be real gentle. I like to just use my fingers to pull it up so that I'm not disturbing the safety pin. Okay, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna actually stand up on my shoe. So I'm gonna move you guys a little closer to my setup where I can stand up and show you what I'm looking for with how it's fitting. So I, I can stand in first and do my demi plie. I wanna make sure that this isn't too tight, that it doesn't feel like it's gonna cut off my circulation right here. It feels pretty good right here. It feels pretty good. I feel like I can't really, it's not really disturbing my plie in any way. It feels pretty nice. Now I'm gonna go up. Um, if you're um, new to point, you might you might actually put on your other shoe as well, so you you can go up on both feet at the same time and not have to be up there just on one foot. So let's just slip that other shoe on real fast. Like I said, we're gonna be taking them on and off many times. Now when you're trying it on, I don't necessarily recommend rolling up. At some point, you might try rolling up um, so that you can see if the heel stays on. Let me actually move other sides so you can see that, but. Um, but it just recommends stepping up. So put one foot there, put the other foot up. And so now I can kind of feel how that is going with the arch. So for me, um, since the single elastic isn't really my favorite, I don't feel like it's giving me too much support. I do feel like my ankle is going a little bit far over, but that's gonna be personally for me fixed with the crisscross for you. You wanna really feel that it's, it's pulling the heel up close to you and that it is 
um, still tight on your foot when you're up on point. So that this right here is nice and placed well over the uh, joint of your arch right here. Place it over that joint so it's right in that crease. And then when you're up, it's over the front of that joint. That's where you're trying to give yourself the support. So I actually think this is pretty good. I actually think this is a pretty good loop here. So I think I'm gonna leave it like that. If I had sewn it too tight, I would know because you'd see your skin kind of bunching over the top and that wouldn't be so nice. It would be way too tight and you really don't want it to be too tight. If it was too loose, then you'd be able to pull too much of it and you wouldn't really be feeling any support for it. So I'm, I'm happy with where that is on that foot. So next, let's pin um, the crisscross elastics. Then we're gonna do both the ribbons after that. So gently, carefully take the shoe off. Let's leave this one, right, because we like it. I'm gonna take this shoe off as well. And then I'll show you where I like the crisscross elastics. So for crisscross elastics, there's many options for it. And again, I have my two pieces of elastic for this one. Whoops, let's get the two that match, these two that match. This one was for my other single loop. So I'm gonna grab um, my pins. I'm gonna put the, the shoe on my foot and I'm actually gonna kinda just try to lay it on there and see how it looks. So let's just lay it on there and just kind of placing this. This seam is always a nice reference point right here. So I like to generally go somewhere around that seam and this will let me kind of see the angle that I want because the angle does matter. Like if you have the angle this way and then you're trying to get your elastic to come this way, it's actually gonna like gap there and not give you a nice smooth um, look. So, or the right support. So we want it to be angled back towards you a little bit. And then in the side, I'm gonna again, sew it pretty far back to the heel. So I'm kind of thinking that that might be good. I'm gonna go from basically this seam to the other seam. Um, let me just pin it and give it a try. It's kind of hard to, to feel all of it until you really sew it. Um, but so let's just pin it and then I'll try it on and show you how it looks. Okay, so I'm gonna lay this here. I'm gonna pin it. I like to go from the outside in when I pin so that I have room for my feet there. And again, I'm gonna try to match that angle that I just had. Mm, let's see. Sometimes it's a little hard to, um, to do, especially with the shoes that I like because the shoes that I like have a really high wing. What that means is my shoe is actually hard all the way up until here. A lot of shoes are actually hard only up until here, like this one that I have. My Russian Point is actually soft already very far before where that seam would be, but this one's actually hard all the way up until there. So it does make sewing the elastics a little complicated. So now I have, I'm kind of like picturing laying it out where my foot would have gone. Then I'm gonna kind of tuck it into the back Again, I'm kind of aiming for parallel with that back seam back there, and let's see how this looks. And I'll probably try it on again after this. I really do recommend trying it on so often, like way more often than you feel like you wanna try it on, because it is kind of a tedious process to try your shoes on, especially if you're new to point and putting them on is kind of a laborious process. You'll notice I haven't tied my drawstrings yet. That does help make it easier to put your shoe on so it's like a little bit looser. And that can be helpful when you're doing this over and over and over again, trying it on. So I'm gonna try it on. Again, pull the elastic up and then take your fingers in here so that you can pull it up like kind of like a shoehorn and see how that feels. Okay, so I already know that this is way too loose. Like I can really pull it up. That's way too loose for me. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna um, come out of it and then pin it even more. So these point shoes, um, great question, Danielle. These point shoes that I'm sewing right now are called Suffolk Solos. Um, they're, my, they're my favorite point shoes um, right now. They're really fabulous and give me so much support. Um, I tend to have the problem with going too far over my point shoes and kind of falling over the front. And then I tend to get a little bit of injury in the front of my ankles. So these shoes, like I mentioned, have a really high wing and the box is hard really far up. So for me, this is an awesome option to really help keep me supported. Um, I think I've tried almost every brand under the sun and I probably will continue trying brands as I get stronger on point and feel more comfortable up there. Um, I always like to, 
work towards a softer shoe, but in the beginning, when I tend to get so injured here, I like, to, I like a really hard and stiff shoe. Um, a lot of times beginners starting off on point will have a softer shoe to get started with, but I like a really hard, I, I personally like a really hard shoe. Um, and, and most fitters will put me in a hard shoe. Um, okay, this is like, this is a lot better. This is a lot better. I, I'm, I'm feeling like it's actually touching my foot and actually holding the shoe on. So I'm gonna use that as um, a guide for the other elastic. So let's pin. So you can see I have like a lot of elastic folded under there, right? This elastic was way too long um, for this, uh, this, this, how tight I want my elastic. So I'm gonna use that amount um, here as a guide for my other shoe. Okay, so I have tried in the past, this is a pair of Russian points. Russian points were my favorite for a really long time. I still love the color of Russian points. They're more like white and they remind me of Balanchine um, Diamonds Ballet, which is like super white with the white tutus and the whole, the whole like really uh, clean look. I like that, I like those a lot, um, but they tend to uh, twist on my feet, which I'm not a huge fan of. Um, the Suffix are one of the few shoes I've had that didn't twist on my feet. So it's actually uh, your point, your foot can actually twist in your point shoes, which is actually pretty uncomfortable, um, I find. So having these high wings can really help your feet not twist in the point shoes. That was my biggest issue with Russian points. And again, I do have a sense that as my feet continue to change and grow, as they always do when we're doing point work, that one day I might be able to revisit those shoes. Um, but the, these suffix for now are awesome. I have tried Gainer Mindens in the past as well. Um, those are a little bit more synthetic fiber. So the ones that I'm holding here and most point shoes are, are um, like paper mache kind of, and they break down with your sweat, whereas Gainer Minden doesn't actually do that. The shoe kind of comes pre-broken, it's synthetic fibers, and it doesn't really break in the same way. It doesn't wear out the same way. They last a little bit longer and they just are a very different experience. Um, I personally wasn't a huge fan of them, but I think it was because I was too early in my ballet journey to try them and I haven't tried them again since. Um, I had, a, again, I have a hard time with going too far over my box and the Gainer Mindens I felt like didn't give me enough support, but I've seen some people who are new to ballet and who really, really love Gainer Mindens. I think so much of it has to do with the shape of your foot and what you consider your challenges and what's working for you and what's difficult for you. That really makes the difference in which point shoe you get. Okay, so that actually kind of worked. First try, it's nice and tight, so I do feel like I have some support here from the from the shoe, from the elastic. I can't pull it too far away from me, but I don't feel like it's cutting off my circulation. So I'm gonna just try this other shoe on, and then I'm gonna stand in first, and then I'm gonna go up there, and I'm gonna see how it all feels. So again, being super gentle because you don't wanna rip your elastics or your safety pin or anything like that. So as much as you can, holding on to the fabric of the shoe to put it on and not using the elastics. So just like set the elastic up, put your fingers in the fabric and use your fingers to pull the fabric up. Now again, be super careful. Don't pinch your, don't cut your fingers on your safety pins. It is a part of it, but it's not pleasant. So let's climb on up. So obviously I have two different elastics, but I just want to show you the difference of them. So you can see that they do sit on my foot in a different place, right? This one goes right up the crease of my arch. Whereas this one breaks a little bit lower, right? The crisscross is a little bit lower on the flatter part of my foot. That's totally normal. So I'm gonna demi plie. Feels good. I feel support from the feet, uh, from the elastics, but I really don't feel them cutting in. I don't wanna feel them cutting into my feet. I'm gonna go a little wider in a second too and just double check. Yeah, it feels pretty good. I'm not feeling any any ex excess tightness in the shoe or in the, in the elastics. So now I'm gonna just place one foot up and climb the other foot up. Now, they you can see kind of how they look here and where they break. Again, it's a very different place. The single one breaks a little higher or uh, sits a little higher on my foot than the crisscross. And again, you can play with where you want this to go. You can play with it by simply positioning your elastic in a different place on your foot. But um, you can see the difference in where that support is. So from this view, you can kind of see a little bit of why I like the crisscross better because my ankle uh, has the, the farthest out part is right here. And so I like my crisscross to sit on the furthest part out of my ankle. But for a lot of people, this is the farthest part out, a little bit higher up. And so this single elastic is gonna work out a little bit better for them. 
so you can see, I'll put them next to each other so you can see them where that elastic sits. And again, you want it to be supporting the farthest out part of your foot so that you, you're not pressing too far over your shoe. So I'm gonna climb on down. I'm just gonna do like a real quick dummy test. I do feel my heel wanting to slip a little bit, but I think that's okay. I think what's gonna happen is the ribbon is gonna help it a little bit and the drawstring will help it a little bit. But yeah, I do see that heel wanting to slip off a smidge. How about this one? A little bit too. Not, not nothing, it doesn't happen immediately. So I think that the ribbon and the drawstring is gonna help take care of that. It doesn't seem too bad. Okay, so last thing here, let's try the ribbons. So again, be real gentle while you take off your shoes, slip your fingers, into the fabric to take it off. Try not to just pull the shoe off because remember you have the safety pins and there's really nothing more disappointing than yanking your safety pins off by accident. So again, slip your fingers in and, pr and pull the shoe off from inside the fabric. Trying not to use the elastics for anything forceful. Okay, so um, for me, for the ribbons, when I'm doing my crisscross, I actually often do put the ribbons um, right uh, right between the elastic and the and the shoe. So what I'm actually gonna do is unpin, put the ribbon there, and then repin. So let me show you what I mean by that. And and for the single elastic, it's gonna be different. So let me tip you up so you can see. So I'm gonna unpin. Unpin this. And then from here, I'm actually gonna place my ribbon with my elastic, one on top of the other, and put it right back where I had it. So now my ribbon and my elastic are the same angle, and one is right on top of the other. I kind of call this like the lazy sewing because then you only have to do one stitch for both the ribbon and the elastic. You don't have to make two separate ones. And again, not everyone likes the same placement, so you can play around with it. And what I mean by like is what I was talking about with where the cross falls on your ankle when you're up there. So um, you want the cross to really support the part of your ankle that's the farthest out so that you have the right support. So here's what that looks like. And then let's just do the other one. And again, if you have brand new uh, ribbons that you didn't just take off of your other point shoes, you'll probably have to cut them into quarters when they arrive on the on there. So again, I take this off, I put the ribbon on top of it, face the same angle, and then I'm gonna put it right back where I got it from. And then I'm gonna go safety pin from the outside in, because when I try it on, I wanna have space for it. Okay, so I'm just gonna double check that I pinned it back on how I like it. It looks good, pretty even. Okay, let's just set this one aside for a sec. Now, if you don't have the crisscross elastics, your ribbons can go anywhere. So, because um, I'm just gonna try it on because that'll help me find out where I want my ribbons to go. Again, when you're trying it on, being really careful, fingers into the fabric and pull it on, right? Don't use the elastics at all because you're just going to rip your safety pins and it'll be really, really sad because you'll have to go and pin it all again. So again, I kind of want them to lay up diagonally. They should kind of look like your, um, your soft shoes with those crisscross elastics. So I usually use that seam again for uh, for guidance. Some people will even use like folding the shoe and then putting the ribbon here as guidance. That's another awesome option. So that would be like folding like this and then putting the ribbon in here as a really great way to check where you want it to go so that you can kind of see where you want that to go. So personally, I like to have it um, like, whoops, let me face it this way, um, facing to back towards your ankle near that seam. So let me pin it there so I can show you. Actually, on this shoe, why don't I show you that other method? Because this one I basically already showed you the way I like to do it, but let me show you the other method. So the other method, let me actually just go through with the whole thing so you can see it. So you fold the shoe in half, uh, you fold the heel down, and then you take the ribbon and you slip it in there, and then you pin it on. 
and I'll tie them for you in a sec so you can see the different way and compare it. So here, and then I pin it. And then again, for the other side, I fold the back down. And then I slip it in. And then I'm going to pin it there. Remember I said I use like six safety pins, eight safety pins. Here's why. All right, so let's try it all on. Um, actually, I see that I didn't really make these very even, so let me actually just do a little bit better of a job. I'm gonna pull this one a little bit further out. Always good to just double check before you try it on because trying it on takes the longest and you wanna save those try-ons. At least get as ready as you can for the try-on before you go for it. So the angle of your ribbons does matter a lot. I'll show you why when I put them on and stand up, but the angle that your ribbons, like where they're facing, matters a lot for how, for num not only the aesthetics, but also um, how, um, how supportive they are. So you can see I've got them a little bit straighter now, a little bit more lined up. So here, let's put this shoe on. We'll put them both on. Again, place the elastic up. Fingers go in to the fabric and gently slipping it up over your heel. And then place the elastic. And now I'm gonna tie it. So there's lots of different ways to tie your point shoes. I'll show you how I do it. I go across, pick them up. Now I go under my ankle, switch which hand is holding which. I go up over the top, switch which hand is holding which. Then I turn my foot sideways. And then I bring the knot to the inside of my foot. From here, I'm gonna just tie a little half bow and then I will stand up and show it to you. So from here, I think I have the back, the ribbons backwards because my tail of my ribbon is too short, but that's okay. I'll be able to get it tied for you. I won't sew it on and leave it this way. Okay, so now let's try on the other shoe. So again, being super gentle, right? Open in the shoe. Make space for your foot. Try to only be grabbing the fabric. Try not to be grabbing the elastics. Then pull the elastics up super gentle. Don't rush this part. Fingers in and slip it up your heel. You feel, see how I'm kind of like having to inchworm my feet to get it in there? Okay, so again, I, I crisscross. I go around the back, switch which hand is holding which ribbon. Come around the front. And then I open my foot to the side. One more time around, open my foot to the side so that I can tie it on the inside of my ankle. And again, you know, I haven't sewn anything yet, so I can always undo it. I'll always pull and tuck my knot in underneath. Okay, so let's stand up and see how this is looking. Okay, so here I am with my shoes and my ribbons. You can see they're in a slightly different place. This one's higher and this one's a little bit lower, right? Again, just different preferences there, different for how it works. So if I demi-plie, I can see this one is gapping just a little bit. So I think that that angle is not quite right. And I think I actually need my angle to go more back and less up. So I'm gonna think about that going more towards the back so that it's not so gappy right here. So you can see the top is very tight, but this is very loose. We really don't want that. It's gonna drive you crazy if you sew your shoes like that. So you can see that the ribbon really wants to be pulled that way. So I think I'll try to repin it facing the back of the shoe a little bit more. I think I have it pinned too upright. So let's climb up. Actually, let me show you this one. This one's like pretty good. This one's pretty good. It's got a little bit of gapping here, but not terrible. So I think I might, again, change that angle a little bit more uh, this way instead of so much that way. I might change that angle a little bit. You wanna just play around with it and make sure when you plie, you don't have too much gapping, right? You really wanna check for that. Again, it's gonna drive you crazy if you have that plie with the gap. So let's see how they're looking up on point. So you can see that the ribbons sit at a slightly different place in my foot. And again, that is really a matter of preference and foot shape. So 
you can see that the, this left one is sitting a little higher around the crisscross, whereas this one is a little bit lower. And that's really, again, a matter of preference here for how you like your shoe to fit. Um, your fitter can kind of help you with suggestions of what would work for your foot. But again, you can see this one, the ribbon and the elastic come over the furthest out part, and this one they don't. So for me, this one's probably not as good as this one for support. So the last thing we'll do here, I'll show you how we would start this sewing process. Again, um, before I do it, I will re-pin those ribbons on the diagonal a little bit more. It might take you a few tries um, to make sure that the ribbons don't gap, but it is, it is possible. The right angle of the ribbons definitely is possible. Um, I won't bore you with that here. It might take me about 15 minutes to get it just right. Um, so I won't bore you with that. But again, what I'm talking about is the angle that this shoe is in relation, or that the ribbon is in relation to the shoe. So this one probably needs to be more like that because right now I have it pinned this way. I have it pinned sort of vertical, but it was gapping pretty bad. So I think it needs to be pinned on this or sewn on this diagonal. So I would pin it again and pin it in that direction and try it on a few more times to see if that can fix it. You really wanna take your time with this one. The first time you sew your shoes, it can be a little bit maddening, but keep, keep at it, stay patient with it because this is one of those ones where it's gonna drive you crazy in class if you have it gapping on you. So if you need something to do while you're sewing it, maybe listen to a Broche Banter podcast episode. They're about 30 to 45 minutes. Should keep you company while you're sewing your point shoes. You can hear all about stories of other dancers like you who are starting ballet. Um, my story is even on there as well. So give that a listen if you need something to do while you're sewing your point shoes, something to keep you patient and motivated because it does sometimes take a few tries to get that ribbon just right and to get it pinned in the right way. Okay, so when I am going to sew my point shoes, the very last step, they make these cute little stitch kits. Yeah, a lot of companies sell them. Um, you can find them online on the dis on Discount Dance. Um, if you're at the local dance store, they'll have it to sell you as well. Um, they're really great for a couple of reasons. Let me just open it up and show you. So number one, the needle is huge. The needle is huge. It's a huge needle because we're talking about really thick fabric, really, really thick fabric. So the needle is really big and helps you with that. Again, the, the, the thread is really big and thick too. The thread is really, really thick. It's almost like fishing wire, it's huge. Um, you can use dental floss too. Some people do use dental floss and a, and, and a needle, but if, you, if it's your first time, the stitch kit might be the way to go so that you can feel more confident um, that all of it will hold. So there's nothing worse than your elastics ripping off in your first class. Trust me, we've all been there. So we, tap, we, we get a little bit of it. Now, personally, when I'm starting to sew, I do like to, um, I don't like to tie a knot in my, in my thread. I like to just loop it around a bunch of times. So I'm gonna show you just one of these, um, just sewing one of these elastics on. So, um, we're gonna do one that I know I'll keep. Um, I will go back and repin these ribbons. I will listen to a podcast episode to keep me company and repin these ribbons until they are just exactly how I like. I might even use my old shoes for inspiration to make sure that I, just to, just to kind of cheat a little bit and make it a little bit um, faster to do it. So my old shoes, I actually did a little bit different. My old shoes, I did crisscross. I, did, I wasn't lazy. I did crisscross and then the ribbon is in a third location. So I did sew three different places for my last shoes. I might do that again, or I might stick with this new one. I kind of like this new one um, that I have, and I might just try it. It always, it never hurts to try a new kind. Um, sometimes it's nice to get a change of scenery if for your feet. Okay, so I have my needle in my thread, huge needle, huge thread. And I'm gonna go like this. Um, I, when I start my sewing, um, I'm gonna pick any one of them to start with. Let's say I pick this one. What I'm gonna do, um, there's so many ways to sew and depending on how adept you are at sewing, you are welcome to abandon what I am telling you about how to sew and do what you know because um, I am not that adept of a sewer, honestly. So I go pretty slow and um, always <laughs> hope that I get better at it. And I do with every single time I sew my shoes. Okay, so I'm just trying to find a good angle for you guys here. So what I do is I go through the elastic and then through the canvas 
and I just go a little bit. So first to tie, to tie my knot off, I just go through the ribbon and, the, um, and through the canvas. I'm not all the way through the shoe yet. And then I'm gonna go here. I'm gonna pull it almost all the way to the end. And then I'm gonna go again, and I'm just gonna do that a few times so that I can basically create an, um, a little holder for that tail. So here I did that again, and I'm gonna try to tuck the tail in that loop. So the tail is here, and I'm gonna try to pull the tail through the loop so that the loop will hold it tight. And now I'm starting to wrap my tail. I'm gonna go probably two more times here wrapping my tail with the thread. So I'm wrapping, I'm pulling the tail out and then I'm pulling the thread around it. So I'm basically creating loops around my tail. Then once I've done that, I will go all the way down the, all the way across. Some people actually even go all the way down the elastic and make a little square. That's also awesome. That way is really fabulous if you have the patience for it because it's very unlikely that it's gonna come undone. But now I start actually going all the way through the shoe. I go pretty close to this seam so that it's gonna be kind of invisible. I go all the way through the shoe and then I go back down And I go all the way across just like that. And then at the very end, when I get to the very end, I'm gonna tie it off the same way I tied off in the beginning. I go through the shoe and back. And through, let me be. I wanna make sure I get enough stitches in here for supporting my foot. So through the shoe and back. Now again, as I mentioned, I am not uh, that adept of a sewer, so if you have a better strategy and you are not, this is not your first rodeo, feel free to do your way, whatever you think is gonna provide the strongest seam. If you are new to sewing, this way that I'm showing you is easy because that is my skill level of sewing and so hopefully it'll work out for you too. So again, I'm just going straight across and we're on the home stretch here for this one. And of course you just repeat this for every single place that you have a pin. Okay, so now I'm at the end and I'm gonna do that same thing. I always like to make sure that the ends are the best. I might do a couple of extra stitches right on the end because the end is always gonna take the most force. The middle doesn't take as much force. It's the ends that always does. So I'm here, I've sewn all the way across. And then now I'm gonna again, just kind of go through the canvas and the elastic. Then I'm gonna actually stick my needle through that loop that I just made and pull it in. Oops, let me just grab my elastic in there. One sec. Rookie mistake, happens to the best of us. Let me just pull that out. Okay, don't do that. Don't go around your elastic. So I gotta rethread this. You gotta watch the troubleshooting today too. So again, let's try that again. I go through the canvas and the elastic. And then I stick my needle through that little loop that I just created and then pull it tight. I'm gonna do that maybe three or four more times. Through the canvas and the elastic, through the loop and pull, canvas elastic through the loop and pull. Okay, and now I'm just gonna give it a little tug, a little tug, especially on both of the ends. I'm gonna just tug and see how it feels. Um, see if it feels like it's gonna support my body weight. Now you have to think about your body weight weighing a lot more than just the amount you tugged there, but it's still at least a good gut check to see if you're in the right place and see if you have sewn it tightly enough. So now I'm just gonna cut off the tail I'll save that thread for later. And then you repeat that with all of the um, all of the ribbons and elastics, wherever you have the pin. Then you take your pins out. Last step is to pull your drawstring. I always recommend only leaving it in a bow tie until you're sure you like it. 
Once you know you like it, you can tie your drawstring in a double knot and cut the ends off. But until you know, double um, bow tie so that you can adjust it is super helpful because there's really nothing worse than tying your drawstring too tight and you can't make it looser and then your point shoe is cutting off your circulation and your heel. So I always recommend go looser and then pull it tighter as you need to because it's a lot easier to go that direction if you make a mistake than the other direction. All right, dancers, I hope this was helpful with your crisscross sewing, your single loop sewing. You have your different types of ribbon, your stretchy ribbon. You have clear elastic as another kind of elastic option. Um, Take your time, be patient. As you can see, this took me 40 minutes and I only just pinned them all and I have to repin some of it. So if you are new to sewing point shoes, if you are new to this whole process, just know that it is a long process in the beginning. So just budget the time for it and make sure you take the time for it so you don't start to get impatient with it and sew your shoes in a way that doesn't work for you. These things are expensive, right? They're very expensive. So it was worth the extra time to make sure that you sew them in a way that you like. So be patient with it, listen to a podcast, watch some TV, do something while you're sewing so that you'll have the patience to sit there. Don't forget, try on often so that you know that you're on the right track. Don't be afraid to repin and take your time with your shoes. Once you have them, the ribbon and the elastic make a huge difference in your experience up there. So follow some of these tips. Be sure you research around the internet too. Lots of people have ideas and tips on how they sew their shoes. So if something's not working for you, it can always be fixed. Um, go to your fitter, go to Google, go to your teacher, and they can usually recommend something for you or at least point you in the right direction. So I hope this was awesome. Um, have an awesome rest of your day and uh, we'll see you guys around the internet. Take care.